exercise two through exercise five use CodePen. And as we progress through the exercises, you are going to begin to incorporate images into your layouts. Now, using CodePen presents an issue in that your images are going to need to be in your root level folder on the server in your domain for the art 344 class and for those in the mat 125 class at maricosta your images will need to be in your student folder on the mat server either way you have to have an absolute path which includes the protocol to your image now let's look at how you can go about doing this so first you can if you're not creating the images yourself or taking your own photography if you're using a resource like pixabay you can find an image and you can right click and copy the image address all right so i've already done that and pasted in the url the uri to this image on pixabay so this is our absolute path to this image okay we can use this path or we can go ahead and download the image i'll just download the 640 by 459 let's download and then it's always a nice idea to go ahead and give the um, creator credit so i'm just going to copy this the image already downloaded to my downloads folder i've already grabbed it and put it in a root folder i'll show you here in a moment but i'm going to copy and i'm just going to have a text file open on the side and i'm just pasting in that information i'll go ahead and show you so let's just make a new text file and we'll paste in and we'll see this will have a path to the creator of this content so you can include this inside of your HTML just as a, a shout out if you will a nod to the person who created the artwork I don't believe you have to it says free for commercial use no attribution required but it's a nice thing to do so I'm going to move this off to the side for a moment and I'm going to point out that here is my work folder on my local computer and you can see I have my different exercises for the class here is exercise 2 I'm just going to work with this folder you'll see inside this folder we have an images folder and then we have a couple of images and this is the image which we just downloaded from Pixabay. So that's the basic setup. You have to have either the absolute path to the image, like so, or you have to download the image and place the image in an images folder in your exercise folder. This is the easiest way to keep track of which image is used in which exercise. There's another strategy, but there's no reason to complicate this. Keep the images specific to each exercise in the exercise folder in a folder labeled images. Now, we need to get the image onto our exercise in CodePen. First, let's take a look at creating the link using our absolute path. First, we are adding the image tag, and then we're going to use the source attribute, and the value of our attribute will be the path, absolute path, to the image on, in this case, Pixabay. We're following, and again, I just went here, right click, paste it in the path so I can see the path. So let's go back to code pen. So we now see the absolute path, which includes the protocol for where this file, this image 
is being stored on one of the Pixabay servers. Next, we have the alt attribute. Two things. If the image does not display, the alt attribute will display on the page. And for those accessing the page who might have a uh, vision impairment or they are blind, then the alt becomes very important because this is their description of the image. And I want all of you to take into consideration if you could not see, then you would appreciate the fact someone is doing their best to describe what is in the image. This way, the person gets a much more enriched user experience. I will be looking at the alts quite intensely in the class, and you need to describe the image the best you can. Now, you don't have to go into super detail, but you need to get the idea across. So, as an example, if we take a quick look at the image, what I want to get across is the fact is that a person is interacting with a mobile device, a mobile phone, and on that phone is a login screen. And there are other devices on the screen, desktop, a tablet, and a small phone device. And each of these have a login screen that is changing its layout based on the width and height of the device. So we need to get all of that across. Matter of fact, if you really wanted to be nice about this, you're going to describe that it's a blue background. The blue background starts in the upper right hand corner as a dark blue and fades to a lighter blue in the lower um, uh, right hand corner. You're going to describe the screen. You're going to describe the type. You're, you're going to do your best to create a, a more rich user experience. All right, enough said there. If we go back to our pen, you will see that basically I what I have just talked about is what I have written in the alt attribute as the attribute's value. Following, we have the width and the height attribute. And we're going to call out in this case, the width and height of the image. How do I know the width and the height? Well, I open the image up in a program like Preview. You could open this up in any graphics package and get at the width and height. This one is 640 by 459. The resolution says 300. The resolution doesn't matter in this environment. The resolution could say 1. The resolution could say 5,000. This image will still be 640 by 459 regardless of this number. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we know the width and the height. We can add the width and the height to our image element. I call this an element now. We started out as a tag, image tag. As soon as we add the source, as soon as we add the width, this is now an element because this tag contains other function. Also important, the width and the height. We're calling out the width and the height. This way the browser render engine knows what's coming its way, can reserve this space, and the idea is the space is created, it's allocated, and the image will go inside. Technically the image, the page should draw quicker because the space is being um, reserved. So keep that in mind you should include the width and the height. Now that changes later on with responsive layout. In a comment, I have that information I copied earlier. I have added that information as a credit to the author in a comment because that is a nice thing to do. Now let's look at another method of placing the image into your layout on code pen. And I should point out that the protocol is secure, HTTPS, and I believe you cannot add an image to your page if the image is not on a secure server. 
being said, let's look at the next approach. So I need to get the image onto a secure server. So you need to get your image to your domain hosted by SDSU. The MAT students, you need your image in or on the MAT server in your MAT class in your student folder. Let's take a look at the SDSU approach. I will need to go, I'm using FileZilla. I am already connected to the domain, my personal domain for the class. We're going to go to public HTML. And here is my exercise two folder. Matter of fact, let me update this. Let me go back here. So I'm looking at my Art 344 folder, and then I see all of my different exercises inside. So I'm going to open exercise two. Here are the two images. So here's my folder on the server. I'm going to take my images folder. Let's go, let's go back one level. I'll take my images folder and just drag this over. So my images are now on the server. I need to get the URI for the image that I want to place in CodePen. Let's go back and let's take a look at our index. I'm going to update the index. Here's exercise two. So if I open the images folder, so there's images, then forward slash, that means open the folder and look inside. And we are looking for the file. Where is it? Right here, the login. So I'm going to copy, paste, and hopefully the image shows up. There is our image. Here is our absolute URL to the image. I'm going to copy this and we'll go back to CodePen. Now, I didn't show you this before, I should have, but basically, if I open up the screen here, there's the image that we placed from a absolute path to Pixabay. Now we're going to place the image with an absolute path, which goes back to our exercise two folder within your domain on the SDSU servers. Again, this is for the 344 class at SDSU. Now we can see we have what appears to be a copy. This one again has our image element our source attribute, but you will see that the path is now going to Art 344 SP100. That is my domain hosted by SDSU. Again, each of you have your own domain number. The IT people are still working through why we're getting two forward slashes here. It still works, so it's not a problem. You could leave the two forward slashes or you can delete one of them everything should still work the same. Now, that doesn't happen all the time. That pops up every now and again. So if it happens to you, it should not be an issue. So we now have our absolute path to our image. I have the exact same alt. I have the exact same width and height. I'm going to save. And there's our first image. This is the one that is on the SDSU domain. There is the second image. This is the one that is on Pixabay. So adding an image to your page is pretty straightforward. You just need to get the absolute path to the image. Whether that path is somewhere out on the web or that path is directly to an image inside your domain. Either way is going to work, but you need the absolute path.